In 2021, I independently released my photography book, Stops Along the Way. No publisher, just me handling all the marketing and all the fulfillment. And while I'm extremely proud of the end result, this project proved to be a very costly undertaking. So let's get into the numbers, what I spent, what I made, what I learned, and the one mistake that dramatically affected my profits. YouTube, what is good? So these are my two photography books right here. This is Stops Along the Way. This is a book that I released in July of 2021. So close to a year ago, this book came out. Hands down the most proud I've ever been of anything that I've made. It's my best body of work for sure. And it focuses around the idea that creatively we go through different moments in our life and these moments eventually pass. And this book solidifies or documents three real creative phases that I had. And every time I look at this book, I'm reminded of those times and I'm reminded of how special creativity is and how these waves of inspiration happen to us as artists. And this second book is actually a book I put out a few years ago and I re-released it at the end of last year. It's called Something to Say. I re-released it as a hardcover because I wanted something that was out for a little bit longer on the site. The first one was a very small paperback. So between these two books, I want to tell y'all how much it costs for me to publish them, what were the mistakes that I made, just my entire experience around this because I know photo books are something that a lot of photographers are interested in. One, because like I was just talking about, they lock in and solidify and document pieces of your creative journey. And who doesn't love being able to look back on times in their life and things that they made with, I don't know, kind of like some rose colored glasses, I guess, and just have this pretty book to remind you of the good times and certain times in your life. That's one great thing. That's more of a personal note. On a business side of things, it's obviously nice to make a little bit of extra money and have a way to monetize your photography. So first and foremost, I want to go through these numbers right here of what it cost me to create this book. The total printing cost between these two books was $39,939. It's kind of a lot of money, I'm not gonna lie. 39,000, close to $40,000 spent on printing alone. That's how much it costs to print these books. Now, the reason I chose to print these books independently was because I didn't feel like I was ready for a publisher. I didn't think that I was at a point in my career where I really needed to have someone make this book for me. If I do finally get a publisher and publish a book, which I plan on doing eventually, I want it to be half actually written information and then have some photography in it. I don't want it to just be a photography book. Y'all know that this channel is focused on more than just photography. It's focused on business, mindset, and then photography and creative inspiration as well. So if I create a book with a publisher, I want it to focus on all those things and be a real representation of me and be something that can really help people and not just photos. So that's why I chose to do this project independently. Now, we're going to talk about primarily this project right here because that is where most of the sales came from. I'm looking in my notes right now. So if you see me look down, that's why. The sales for this book right here, the deluxe, I only sold 59 copies last year and I still have 18 copies in the reserves. So the total sales on this book alone was $5,014. $5, Sorry about that. So not a ton of money made on this book. Like I said, it was a re-release. -re it was something that I just wanted to put out and have on the site. But with this book, I released three versions in July. So I released a special edition quote version of the book. There were 200 of those. I ended up selling 183 of those. So the reason I did a quote version is because I wanted to have something special for people who ordered the first 200 copies. Those were numbered out of 200. And then the remaining, I was going to do a run of a thousand hardcover and a thousand softcover. So the quote edition, I sold 183 of those and I made 14,638. With the softcover, I sold 239 copies and made 11,000 $950 and the hardcover I sold 202 copies and I made $16,567 and then like I said this book right here I made $5,014 so if you add all that up that comes out to a grand total of $48,171 now if you take all the photos that I still have in back stock you know my reserve of books that I'm still selling the total like potential profit of all this or the total potential revenue excuse me of all this is fifty one thousand 
$590. Now, $50,000 is nothing to shake your head at. It's a pretty cool number, but as you heard, close to $40,000 of that was spent on printing. So the reason why it was $40,000 to make this book is because I printed these books in the United States. I decided to print them domestically so I could have a quicker turnaround time. The problem with that, it is exorbitantly more expensive. If you were to print these, say, overseas in Asia somewhere, you can have these books printed for sometimes 60%, 70% less than they would cost in America. The problem with that, you need to have the book order be much larger. I would have needed to put that $40,000 basically up front and take all the risk to order you know, 2,000 copies of the book so that I could save the money in the back end. So you have to think of it in terms of where do you want your risk to be? Do you want to risk having 1,000 books left over that you're having to really push to sell? Or do you want your risk to be in the margins like I took? Basically, I chose to have lower margins to ensure that I could order the books quickly, keep them in stock quickly, and just basically deal with the potential fluctuation in orders. I wasn't sure how many people were gonna buy this book, and I didn't wanna take that risk of sending all this money overseas and waiting eight months for a project that potentially might not sell the way I necessarily anticipated. Now that leads me to the massive mistake that I made that dramatically impacted the bottom line on this project. This really cut into my profits, and it's a learning lesson for any of y'all out there thinking about doing a project similar to this. What happened was initially I got a quote from this book company and they told me the books were going to cost around $30, $35 a unit. So I was looking for more of a 50% margin. So I decided to charge $79.99 for the hardcover copy of the book. I thought that was a fair price, especially considering I was doing all the fulfillment myself and you know, it was going to take a lot of time for me to package these books and things like that. So in July, I did a pre-order for the books and of course the quote edition of 200 sold out immediately. I mean, it sold out in a couple of hours. The response to it was incredible. And when I went to fulfill that order, when I went to place the order for those 200 copies, I was met with a surprise. The unit cost of each book was gonna be closer to $46 a lot of money for a book. Now, what happened was a miscommunication between me and the printing company. They thought I was using one type of paper and they quoted me for that paper. I wanted to use a higher level paper because this is a photography book. I wanted it to look good. So it cost more per unit because of this confusion. And I honestly, for a moment, sat there and thought maybe I should just use the cheaper paper because it's what makes sense business-wise, but I chose to create the product that was gonna be the highest quality, exactly what I envisioned, and I ate the cost on my end. So after I realized this mistake, I went back and I raised the price on each book, and I ran a report to figure out exactly how much money I missed out on. So. I sold 149 soft cover books at the lower price point, and I would have made an extra $1,193 had I had the price where it was supposed to be initially and got that quote correct. I sold 128 hardcover books and had to raise that price $10, so I missed out on $1,280 profit. The quote edition books, I should have charged $10 more for those books, and I missed out on $1,830 of profit. So that brings the total potential potential of all these book sales to $55,893, which means my profit at the end of it all after expenses would have been $15,954. So closer to $16,000, whereas because of the mistake, I only made 11.5K in profit, which I know is negligible. A lot of you are probably shaking your head saying that's not a big deal. $4,500 just left on the table because of a mistake that I made it still hurts. And the thing is, with that extra $4,500, you can eat up more of the cost of things like your shipping software, things like you know rollers to print labels, things like boxes, bags, also things like the occasional international shipping cost that might be higher than what you have it priced at for the website. For the most part, I got the shipping cost right. I didn't really have to pay for any of that out of pocket. But when it comes to a project like this, having so many moving parts, having that extra cash flow is essential to making sure that the project is as profitable as possible. And in this case, 
I messed up a little bit. When you're dealing with physical products like this, something like selling a book, it's really beneficial to have potential upsells to your customers. So if someone is coming to your page to buy a book, maybe you can have a package that also includes a print. And maybe your margin on a print is more like 50% or more like 75%. So if someone is buying a book, they can also buy that print and it can help you balance out your margins a little bit, especially on one that is so cost heavy like a book. A print is obviously cheaper to make and you can sell it for a little more money. So in hindsight, I kind of wish I had done a package where maybe I sold the book plus a print for something like, I don't know, $115, $125 to just add in some more profit and some more cash flow to the project. And boost up my total margins. So that's something you can think about. Maybe you could do a special edition where only a certain amount are signed and you charge more money for that. Just be creative, but I think it would have been better to have other options available for people if they wanted to spend more money that would boost my profits and also boost my margins. Now, the final thing that I wanna talk about is creating value with your product. If you're gonna independently sell a book or sell any piece of art, it might be beneficial to take advantage of scarcity and take advantage of created perceived value that you can make essentially as an artist. You know, had I only sold 200 copies of this quote book, I potentially could have charged more money for it. Maybe I could have charged $125 and I would have had a much better margin. Now granted, if you only have 200 copies of the book and they sell out in one day, you're kind of out of luck. You've tapped out your potential profits for that project and you can't go back on your word and release more of them because it's gonna you know, impact your trust that you have with your audience. But I sort of wish that I had done more to create some scarcity in this project and have it be something that had a little bit of a higher demand and wasn't something that was just gonna sit on my website for an entire year. Last year, I thought that was what I wanted <laughs> and now looking back on it, it might not have been the best call. I kind of wish with this project, I had just created something that was there for the people who wanted it in that moment and then was, you know, lost in time. But to the other side, to play devil's advocate, this is something that I wanted as many people as possible to have. And at the end of the day, you know, there's no perfect world scenario. So as a business owner and as an artist, you have to decide where does your value lie? Does it lie in having a long-term project that people can buy over time as they discover you? Is it a quick profit? Is it creating something that's scarce that only your true fans can have and you can make a higher margin on? Where do you wanna put your eggs? At the end of the day, there's no perfect answer. But with all that being said, I think books are still a fantastic way for artists to make money. And more importantly, they're an awesome way for your fans or the people who follow you online to have a physical piece of all the things that you're making and all the things that they see you create online. So if you're a photographer thinking about creating a photo book, I highly recommend it. And if you wanna start with something that's low risk, you can use a similar approach to me where you create the product, then you have a pre-order on your website, and then you cap it at the number you feel comfortable fulfilling. Maybe that's 30, maybe that's 100, maybe that's 1,000. It's really up to you, but I hope this video helped you out. Drop some questions, I'll answer them for the next two hours. Y'all are the truth, and good luck to anyone who's thinking about making their own book.